This is the tool that I use to help people learn how they get into difficulties with their feeling states. Because as I said before, we're going to parse a feeling. And so we're going to go through this in terms of how that happens so that you can learn how you get there. Because it's important to know how you get there so that you can learn how to get out of that difficulty. So I started out, we start out with an activating event, something that triggers your emotional state. And basically the wheels start turning, you start thinking in terms of evaluations, in terms of judgments, in terms of ideas, in terms of fleeting thoughts. But actually, due to the work of, of Dr. Ellis, who really maintains that, uh, that his work came from the philosophy of Epictetus, who maintained that we are not so much disturbed by what we see, is what we think about what we see. So we're going to really go to this thinking capacity. Remember what I said before, thoughts generate feelings and result in behaviors, okay? But now that's just the part of it. That's just part of the iceberg, okay? Because really what's in between this generation of the, the feeling states is our belief system. And basically we're gonna go down here And we call that the rational belief, okay? And that rational belief usually takes the form of, gee, I don't like what that person said to me. Uh, it's really too bad. I wish that they could have been kinder. It could be any kind of self-statement that you might generate. And those are just simple. I want my clients to learn how to make very simple statements so that they can really get clarity because the brain seems to like clear input. And so that's one of the things that I really do emphasize. So keep the trigger, keep whatever that activating is, make it short. And also keep your sentences short. Uh, so that basically, so the belief system usually, as I said, the rational part is maybe I don't like. I wish that. And it's too bad that. These are rational self-statements. And these are what we call sentence stems. That basically you can add, you can end that sentence any way you want to, okay? And basically because, but you want, still want to keep it short and sweet and clear, okay? But what happens is that when we have a trigger and we begin to feel a state because Usually what a client will come in and say to me is that so-and-so um, called me a bad name and I was really mad about that. So they give me the consequent feeling right off the bat. So okay, so we'll circle that particular feeling state because that's the one we're going to work with first. Okay? So what happens here is that we don't just stop with the rational belief. Our brain goes on to another level of belief which is the irrational belief and usually incorporates some kind of should, some kind of awful, oftentimes I can't stand it. If I had money for every time a client said to me, I can't stand that person or I can't stand how that person talked to me, I think I'd be wealthy. So I can't stand and generally that there's some kind of negative rating. Okay, so the same thing applies here, that this, these are sentence stems, and actually you could also add there may also be a shouldn't. Okay, so in any case, so this irrational level, this is irrational, because basically we can't determine, uh, it's really not appropriate for us to determine what somebody should do or what I should do because that's a demand that the world be different than it is, okay? We would always like, we would, could make that into a preference and then you're back into a more rational level of thinking. But when you're thinking should, should is often the lead in for a demand that somebody be different out there or that you be different out there or that the world, it's really only ourselves, others and the world. Those three, uh, those three uh, things are the ones that uh, that really are the ones that we have most difficulty with. So in any case, so to go on, so generally speaking, this is kind of what 
most therapies will work with the person about. I think this is one of the most functional ways to develop insight into how you get to this kind of feeling state that there is. Okay, it's much more, it's much, much shorter and sweeter. But we don't just stop with that because the kind of therapy that we do really includes a disputation process. That means that we're going to start disputing these irrational demands that the world be different. And how do we do that? Well, we develop rational alternative statements to that. It's disappointing that, uh, that uh, I don't like the way that person talked to me. That yields a different level of emotional tone. Okay? When you say, that person shouldn't talk to me that way or shouldn't call me names, then basically you're already beginning to escalate your feeling states and make that much more problematic. Because as you get more and more escalated in terms of your emotions, the more disturbed you become. Okay? But this is how we create our own disturbance. This whole thing here is how we create our own disturbance. And this is one way, and I'm not saying that this is the only way that one can get at this, but this is a good way that people who are really curious about how come they're continuing to feel this way over and over and over and over again and really can't change their behavior. That this is one way you can begin to learn about how you get there. Because how you get out of that is learning how to dispute the irrational demands that you are making on the world or on other people or on yourself even. So getting down to the disputation work, now you're going to develop a, a rational let me see if I could write that better. Okay, what does that mean? What does that include? Usually that includes a disappointment. That basically, that includes um, a, you can stand it because, you know, it's, it's so common for people to say to me, I can't stand that this happening to me over and over again. Well, how long have you been standing it? So I kind of consider that something that's a story you're telling yourself, that that's not really real. So that's why we're really wanting to begin to address that, I can't stand it. So again, and where is the limits to awful? Okay, do you know how, where the boundaries are, where awful is concerned? So let's just consider awful for the moment. Awful really seems to have no boundaries. And when the brain is given a word that doesn't have boundaries, it tends to spin and spin and spin. Okay. So now I'm going to address this whole issue of negative rating. Now that negative rating is usually something's wrong with the other person that they do not like. So they're going to be uh, negatively rating in their, maybe even saying some terrible words that they might not say out loud, but they can say it in their head. And so again, but each one of these things really adds to the level of emotional tone that begins to escalate and get more, more and more dysfunctional for the person, okay? Because the reality is, is that this particular philosophy, and it's really a philosophical based therapy, this particular philosophy maintains that we are not, again, that we do not make other people feel. And that's a very different way of looking at this, and I'll explain to you what I mean by that. So, for example, if we just go back to when we're little, one of the first things that you might remember is that your mother telling you, I'm angry with you because you knocked over the lamp. Now, that's the first instance in which this child is hearing that they're causing someone else, of very important to them, a feeling state of anger. So unfortunately, that's the beginning of this irrational development of you make me feel. Whereas the reality is, is that you feel because you are making interpretations about what that person is doing. And that's where all of this stuff goes on. You're making interpretations all the time as you're going on. So those interpretations wind up with high levels of emotion. In fact, they can wind up being so aggressive that people can hurt 
the other person or themselves for that reason. So it's really, again, we're going to go back to now the disputation again. How do you begin to stem that flow? Well, that's with rational alternative self-statements. So they need to be turned into, well, it's really too bad that that person said to me, because we can go back to the rational ones that are right up here, or we can start saying, well, it's disappointing that, and basically I'll bet that people out there might think, gee, that's a mamby-pamby statement. You know, why would you want to say that when you're really, really mad at that person? Well, it's because it isn't good for you to have that level of emotional upsetment. So that's why, and that's the only reason why, okay? Uh, so in any case, you can choose to do that. The problem is, is that you are keeping that going. You're keeping that old belief that you make people feel and other people make you feel. And you're maintaining that to your disadvantage. So that isn't a, I'm saying that that isn't a beneficial way of talking to yourself. It certainly isn't kind. Okay? So it's disappointing. And I can stand it because the reality is, and this is realistic, you can stand. Okay? You have been standing. If you can, people can stand things for 20 years and keep on saying, I can't stand it. But all they're doing is keeping the disturbance going and going and going. Okay, and you can go as far as to saying, well, it's really, uh, I don't have to like it that that person talked to me that way, which is a much less incendiary way of talking, okay? I basically, that uh, I don't have to like Or you can even say, I don't have to like what just happened. Because basically what you're doing is reducing that level of emotional affect that is maintaining that disturbance. So in actuality, this is a whole parsing of a feeling state of how you got in there, how you can get out of there. So we're looking for the effect to be what? The effect, we're going to go from mad to annoyed or concerned, or really it's a, a frustration because you can't figure out how to change the circumstance, but that's a much lower level of emotional upsetment. Okay, so this is really keeping this in a very linear fashion, so that basically you can see how that begins to develop, that this starts out with some emotional response. Then we're going to go to a larger emotional response that's going to engage your whole body. And then we're going to begin to impact that by using, uh, by developing rational statements so that we can begin to reduce that emotional overreaction. And now you can begin to, this is something that's still valid. You can still be annoyed, but you don't have to be really annoyed. This is just one particular way to go about managing your, uh, your upsetment. And as I said before, when I started out with the last episode, that basically um, I'm, I'm suggesting quite strongly here that these combinations of doing this one time after another, going at warp speed in our head, is what creates a depletion that people then resultingly define as depression. So that's, while it's simple, but it's not easy to apply. You know, you're going to have to work at this, because this is not something that's going to just happen automatically. And it's worth the practice. Because you're the one who is the beneficiary. Let's take another one of these feeling states that are problematic. Let's use the one, let's use the one for, I'm just going to erase this, because we really want to keep these separate these out. This is a finer discrimination in terms of learning how you are processing stuff. We can actually use these same sentence stems that would generate the feeling state of sad uh, by how we are, what the triggering event is, what you're saying to yourself about that. So for example, we could say, well, it's really bad, it's really sad. You know, that person uh, called me a name and it didn't, I don't think it applies to me. 
And then we can go through this whole process very much the same way. However, it will probably yield sad. If you think sad thoughts, you're going to feel sad. That's a corollary, okay? So you can still use the same sequence to learn how you get into this state. And remember that it's independent of mad and scared, okay? So in any case, uh, that's, the next, that's the next level. The reality is that we can really erase this because I insist that, uh, that when I'm doing this with a client, that they pick one, not both, okay? Because what happens in our society is that, that we tend to mix up. Uh, if you listen to people, how people talk, and even yourself, and think about the times that they said, well, you know, I, I feel that that really could have been stated better. That's a thought, that is not a feeling, okay? And basically, the brain doesn't know what to do with that. So you're mixing up a thought and a feeling together. So what I'm asking of you is to really learn how to make a thought a thought and keep the feeling the feeling so that you're not mixing those up together. Okay? So again, using the same method, you can really do a whole lot. And there's innumerable endings that you can make to these self-statements that can yield any one of these. And the same thing really applies to scared. Although one of the things that I really do a little differently with scared is that I ask clients when they are beginning to feel anxious, they call it anxiety, I'm asking them to name that fear. Be specific. Because then you're giving the brain clarity. You're giving the brain something specific with which to hang its hat on, so to speak. Okay? So the same thing really applies. So that this is just a really neat little method that you can use to begin to discern how you get to one state. And let's say, now sometimes we can look at this on a thermometer, say we can look at any of these on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being high and this being low. And so generally speaking, you're only going to get 1 to 2s up here in terms of the rational statement, maybe 3, maybe even going up to 4. But when you get to 7 to 8 with this, the irrational part, you're already taking a toll on your body for doing that, okay? Because then you are really stressing your whole system, all right? Because you're pouring cortisol into your body, basically. And one of the things about, the interesting thing about the brain is that uh, once it learns something, it keeps that. We develop preconditioned patterns in our brains so that we keep doing the same thing over and over until we do something different. Uh, so, and that's now more substantiated in the research. So most everything that we practice over and over and over again becomes conditioned in our brain. And so we will do that. We will just practice that and practice that and practice that. And sometimes to our detriment. So it's also good to look at what is your belief system, okay? What is that belief system? The goal of the treatment that Dr. Ellis started is really to accept yourself wherever you are Learn from your experience as best you can so that you can get better, feel better, and stay better. This may be a little bit complicated for you right now. However, what I'm going to do with the next presentation is I'm going to have specific self-statements that people have made to themselves that will, will identify as the trigger and will start developing specific statements that will lead to these specific kinds of overreactions in terms of feeling states. More to follow.